picture of this man and this woman in holy matrimony. The bond and covenant of marriage was established by God in creation. And our Lord Jesus Christ adorned this manner of life by his presence and first miracle at a wedding in Cana of Galilee. It signifies to us the mystery of the union between Christ and his church, and Holy Scripture commends it to be honored among all people. The union of husband and wife in heart, body, and mind is intended by God for their mutual joy, for the help and comfort given one another in prosperity and adversity. And when it is God's will, for the procreation of children and their nurture in the knowledge and love of the Lord. Therefore, marriage is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently and deliberately, and in accordance with the purposes for which it was instituted by God. Into this holy union, Catherine Diane Manabach and Jacob William McCoy now come to be joined. If any of you can show just cause why they may not be lawfully married, speak now or for else forever hold your peace. I require and charge you both here in the presence of God that if either of you know any reason why you may not be united in marriage lawfully and in accordance with God's word, you do now confess it. Catherine, will you have this man to be your husband, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him? sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him, so long as you both shall live. Amen. Jacob, will you have this woman to be your wife, to live together in the covenant of marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live. I will. Will all of you witnessing these promises do all in your power to uphold these two persons in their marriage? I will. I will. The congregation please be seated. Who presents this young couple for the sacrament of holy matrimony? You may be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O gracious and ever living God, you have created us male and female in your image. Look mercifully upon this man and this woman who come to you seeking your blessing and assist them with your grace that with true fidelity and steadfast love they may honor and keep the promises and vows they make through Jesus Christ our Savior who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The bride of party, please proceed. We're reading from the book of Tobit. And Tobias began to pray, Blessed art thou, O God of our fathers, and blessed be thy holy and glorious name forever. Let the heavens and all the creatures bless thee. Thou madest Adam, and gavest him Eve, his wife, as a helper and support. From them the race of mankind has sprung. Thou didst say, it is not good that the man should be alone. Let us make a helper for him, like himself. And now, O oh Lord, I am not taking the sister of mine because of lust, but with sincerity. Grant that I may find mercy and may go old together with her, 
and she said with him, Amen. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Unless the Lord builds the house, your labor is in vain who build it. Unless the Lord watches over the city, in vain may watch on peace and vigil. It is in vain that you rise so early, and go to the sun so late. They may do to keep the bread of the Lord, who he is to his own sleep. Your children are not good from the Lord. I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. It is not arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is irritable or is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong, but rejoices in all the right. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For our knowledge is imperfect and our prophecy is imperfect. But when the perfect comes, then perfect will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. And when I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall understand fully. Even so, I have been fully understood. So faith, hope, love, abide. These three, but the greatest of all, these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Second Psalm is Psalm 128. We shall pray it in unison together. Happy are they all who fear the Lord and who follow in His ways. You shall be the fruit of your labor. Happy is the one who shall be yours. Your wives shall be like the fruit of the vine within your house. Your children like all the sheep.
from the 15th chapter of the Holy Gospel according to St. John, we hear the words of Jesus when he said, Love one another as I have loved you. In the name of the Holy and Blessed Trinity, one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Indeed, the liturgy of the sacrament of holy matrimony is all about love. The love of Christ for us and our love for each other in response to his commandment to love one another as he has loved us. In the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, Jesus also said, from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. What Jesus said is eminently clear and free from misunderstanding. What he said is that the sacrament of holy matrimony, no longer will the two remain separate individuals. No longer shall the man and the woman continue to be separate, individual creations, but rather they shall become transformed at the liturgy of holy matrimony into one flesh, the two joined together to form one new creation in Christ Jesus our Lord. And he continued, what, therefore, God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Dear friends, we're here this afternoon to witness the joining in holy matrimony of Katie and Jake, to be no longer two separate individuals, but one flesh, transformed into one new creation in Christ Jesus. Just as we become one new creation at our baptism into Christ's death and resurrection, so also do we become a new creation in holy matrimony. The Holy Scriptures tell us also in the first epistle of Blessed Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians that the sacrament in the sacrament of holy matrimony, we see the model in earthly terms of the relationship between Christ and his church. That is, Christ as the holy bridegroom and the church as his holy bride. St. Paul says, specifically paraphrasing Jesus, that in marriage, our holy matrimony, the two shall become one as Christ and the church are one. And Paul goes on to tell us that what the mystery of this new creation is, is love. And he tells us that without love, whatever else we are, and whatever else we may have, and whatever else we may be, without love, we're nothing. He tells us that love is patient. Real love is patient. That love is kind that it is not jealous or boastful, that it is not arrogant or rude, that it does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices in the right. He tells us that love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And perhaps most importantly of all, he tells us that love never ends, not ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ assures us in Holy Scripture that in Christian marriage, the two do indeed become one new creation. And if that is to be lasting and permanent, as Christ intends, then it's essential that the two lovers also be best friends. Best friends who dare to confide in each other their most intimate feelings, desires, and fears. Best friends 
who trust each other implicitly, best friends who share both the joys and triumphs of life, as well as the sorrows and disappointments, best friends who from a deep inner desire and motivation are truly subject to each other out of reverence for Christ. In speaking of Christian marriage, in that same letter to the Corinthians, which I just spoke a moment ago, St. Paul also said that Christian, in Christian marriage, wives must be subject to their husbands. Now, Katie, keep your seat. <laughs> Before Katie goes off like a rocket, let me quickly add that in that statement, which is often misused these day, in these days of political correctness by those who would portray Christian marriage as a negative example of Christianity's proclivity to male dominance, those who do that misuse Paul's words and conveniently leave out the rest of the quote. The rest of the quote is this. Husbands, love your wives. Be subject to each other, not out of selfish motivation or for self-satisfaction, but be subject to each other out of reverence for Christ. And additionally, he said, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loves the church. And as we know, Christ so loved the church that he freely offered his life on the cross at Calvary. In the first reading today from the book of Tobit, we heard the story about a man named Tobias and the woman he is about to marry named Sarah. And before their marriage, in the presence of Sarah, Tobias offered this prayer. Tobias said to God, Grant that I may find mercy and may grow old together with her. And Sarah said with him, Amen. This afternoon we've gathered in this place to witness the beginning of a new creation in Christ, the joining together of Katie and Jake in this sacrament of holy matrimony. And my charge to them is this. If you, too, truly desire to be subject to each other, as St. Paul instructs, and I believe you do, and if you truly desire to become one in heart and mind and aspiration, as well as one in body and soul, as indeed Christ and the Church are one, subject to each other in body and soul, and I believe you do, then I admonish you to make the prayer of old Tobias and Sarah your prayer. You see, Tobias could have prayed for bliss and happiness. He could have prayed for many children, children who would be more beautiful and more talented and more wonderful and brighter than anyone else's children. He could have prayed for fame and fortune and great worldly success. He could have prayed for great esteem among men, or for good health and eternal peace. But he prayed for none of these. He prayed for one thing only, that through God's good grace, he and Sarah might grow old together. And in this prayer is the true nature of being subject to each other out of reverence for Christ. Tobias's prayer expresses the true essence and goal of being made one new creation. Matrimony, and that is <coughs> holy matrimony, is to have God's good grace in your marriage, so that come what may, the two of you might face it together, loving each other, supporting each other, helping each other, trusting each other, confiding in each other because you are best friends. 
best friends who are marrying each other. And because you are lovers who want to be made one creation, you will submit yourselves to each other all the rest of the days of your lives. My prayer for you today, and indeed the prayer of all of us here, I'm sure, is that Tobias's prayer may be fulfilled in your life together. That the true two of you as one new creation from this day forward may have God's grace in your lives to grow old together as one. For as Jesus said, from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would the wedding party please rejoin me at the altar of Catherine, I give you this ring as a symbol of my vow. And with all that I am,
Now that Katie and Jacob have given themselves to each other by solemn vows and with the joining of hands and with the giving and receiving of rings, I pronounce that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Those whom God has joined together, let no man put asunder.
Ladies and gentlemen, I present Katie and Jacob, now by the grace of God, Mr. and Mrs. Jacob McCoy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 